In this video, we're going to do a hookup based upon the 1020 system. We're going to observe our impedances, and then we're going to do a neurofeedback session, and we're going to talk about what would be the best um, parameters for thresholding and for re sustained reward. And then we'll do a little bit of an overview at the end of the session with the client. Before we get started with our actual client, I have this um, the image of the 1020 system on your screen here. And so just to remind you that the 1020 system stands for 10 or 20 percent apart from each other. And the first thing we're going to do is look for CZ and then we could measure pretty much uh, where every other site is based upon where CZ is. And then also where um, we're going to measure the circumference and that's going to um, help us to find the sites that are around the, um, the uh, peripheral areas. And just as a reminder, nation is at the bridge of your nose, and Inion is at the right where, where the, uh, the two occiput meet. Uh, there's a little indenture in the back of the head there. You can, it's pretty easy to spot. And then the preauricular points are the points right where the top of your earlobe um, connect with, your, with the, the skin on your scalp. Um, as opposed to the auricular points, which are where we're going to place our ground and reference sensors. Okay, so now we're going to do our hookup. Remember, we're going to do this based upon the 1020 system, and we're going to look for CZ first. I'm going to hook up my client to C4. Uh, we're going to do an SMR training session. So the first thing I need to do is to measure from the Inion to the Nasion. Inion, you've got to find that spot to the nation, and that is 37 centimeters. And so I'm going to find that halfway mark. And so the halfway mark of 37 is 18 and a half. So I'm going to go 18 and a half. And you could do it from either end, the Asian or the the nation or the Inion. And so here's the 18 and a half. Whoops. And I'm going to mark it. I'm going to put a little mark right there, my little thing, and I'm going to measure from preauricular to preauricular. We saw that image just a moment ago, and here he measures 31. So half of 31 is 15 and a half, which is right there, and I'm going to find my other mark, and I'm going to bring it right to that point, and there's his CZ right there. Next thing I'm going to do is to go 20% to the right to find C4 of the preauricular to preauricular, which was 31. So 31 and 31 is 62, so it would be 6.2 centimeters. So there's his C4 right there. And I can mark that, but I'm just going to leave my finger there, and I'm going to get all of the hairs out of the way. I'm going to find his scalp there, part the hairs, and I'm going to take my, my new prep. There are other cleaning um, uh, um, gels, but I like to use new prep. And I'm going to give it a good wipe, and I'm also going to get his ears wiped up, too. Okay, take a paper towel, keep your paper towels handy, and I'm going to wipe it off. Some people don't wipe it off. Um, I think the 1020 paste goes on a little better if you do wipe it off, but uh, people have different types of skin, and so sometimes it's uh, better to do it one way than the other. So and with each client, it'll be a little bit different. I'm going to take my sensors here. I'm doing one channel. All right, I'm going to do just C4. I'm going to put a little bit of... 1020 paste. Here's my 1020 paste. I put a little bit on there. And I'm also going to take a little bit and put it with my finger right on his C4 spot so that I can get a really good stick right in there. Now these sensors have holes in them. Most of them do. And there's a good reason for that. That is so that when you press it down onto the scalp or the ears or whatever, that a little bit of the 1020 paste comes through that hole. And the purpose for that is um, to make sure that there's no air pockets inside there. 
um, when you actually start your training session. So I've got C4 hooked up, and I'm going to find my reference sensor, and I put reference on the contralateral ear. Some people prefer the ipsilateral sight, but I prefer contralateral. Some people prefer the mastoid, the bone right back in here, not the auricular point. I prefer the auricular point. And so uh, you're going to see me putting it on the ear a little bit easier, off, obviously, on that other sensor, so now I'm, or on that other side there. So now I'm going to put my ground on the ipsilateral side, and a little more than that, just like that. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm going to place it right on his ear. I'm going to squish it down a little bit. And I'm going to look at my impedances on the screen there to make sure that he's got a good, uh, a good hookup. Okay, so now we're going to check our impedances. And what we want to look for, we want to make sure that they're, they're under 10 and hopefully even under 5 and not more than 3 kilo ohms away from each other. So I'm looking up here in the upper left of this screen here and I can see that A1 is about 3 kilo ohms and a R1, which is the reference on the ipsilateral ear, is about 2. So they're within three kilo ohms of each other and they're below five. So we've got a very good hookup. We can see that in the, uh, in the raw tracing here as well. So I'm gonna ask my client if he could please clench his face and his jaw as much as possible, tight, 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 and we can see what goes on here. We get a lot more muscle artifact when he does that. Now relax, thank you, and you can see how that changes. Now I want you to blink a lot. And you can see there's a blink, there's a blink, there's a blink. There's all the blinks now. You can stop blinking. So we're going to show that to our client, and we're going to ask them to try to not do those things so that we can make sure we've got a good, uh, a good session. I'm going to start off with checking to see what all my parameters are. They all look good to me. I'm going to try to see if that's what's going to work for my client. So I start it up, and I give him something to view. What we have here is um, we have, for him, we have a smaller version of it right here on our screen. And what we have here is we're asking him to lower the theta below 7.5 microvolts, to increase his low beta or SMR above 5 microvolts, and to keep that high, high beta down, which is the muscle artifact, right? But he's in good shape with that, so I'm not really concerned about it. So I'm going to say keep your theta down and your SMR up, and every time you do that, you'll gain a point. It's important to try to get between 10 and 15 points per minute. Um, that's, that's what the experts say are, is a good uh, operating, uh, oper operant conditioning um, model. So we just had our client go through one minute, and he got 10 points. So that, that's a pretty good... Um, um, that's a pretty good ratio, points to minute. If he was getting too many points, I would try to make it harder, and that would be to lower the theta because we're trying to keep that lower, or to higher the, the SMR because we're trying to get that um, over the threshold. And so uh, you can see here the red numbers are his, um, his actual numbers, and so he's averaging around 3 microvolts of SMR, or low beta, and around 7.5 microvolts of theta, and again, perfectly under 10, that 5 or so microvolts of the, uh, of, the, um, uh, of the high beta. What would happen if we decided to try and um, make it, uh, you know, if we wanted to make it a little bit easier, let's say, well, let's put the theta at 10, and we'll put the low beta at 2. And now you can see that he's going to be getting a lot more points. And if you have to make changes like that, it's usually one or the other. You can keep an eye on it, and you'll get a sense of which would be the one that would be better to, to change. So now he's obviously getting way too many points. If we go back over here and change this back to 7.5 and 5, we know we're in good shape. The 
other thing that we can do is we can change the length of time that the client needs to maintain the criteria in order to get a point. So that's what's known as sustained reward. Right now it's at a half a millisecond. I'm going to change it to 750 milliseconds, which is three quarters of a second. And now we're back to our original uh, uh, parameters, but now he's also got to maintain it for uh, three quarters of a second. So you can see that this is now more challenging to him. So I'm going to count my points. I'm at now. Wait till I get to 100 to make it easy on myself. And so you can see by the rest of the few minutes here during this session that he's actually getting the right amount of points um, in the right amount of time, keeping the thresholds um, figured out to what works best for him, and then also uh, being mindful of the amount of time that he needs to remain uh, in criteria in order to get that point. Okay, so now we're going to do our disconnect. What we want to do, we're keep paper towel handy, we're going to take the sensor off, we can use it to scoop up some of the extra 1020 paste. Take it off the ears. Take it off the ears. And then what you're going to do is you're going to grab a, a cup of hot water. I keep a hot water dispenser in the office so that I can use it just for this purpose. I'm going to do that over again. I'm going to take my sensors and I'm going to dip them around in the water here, just kind of dangle them around, give them a good, good uh, washing. I might have a little more left in there and then I'll wipe it off a little bit with my um, paper towel. You don't want to wipe too hard because you don't want to be wiping off the gold plating. Sensors last about, they last for about 100 sessions. You'll start to see the silver, silver chloride um, in underneath the um, underneath the gold when, you, and then you'll know it's time to change. And so then I'm going to take a little bit of this hot water, and I'm going to use it to wipe up my client. Try not to send them out into the world with goop all over themselves. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to do a kind of a review. Of, of you know what the session looked like and and how that uh, compares to our clients uh, you know sense of what the session was like so here we have the review of the session that uh, we just did we were trying to get that theta to come down and the low beta to go up and the uh, and then keep the high beta um, the yellow which is a little bit hard to see here um, and you know, maybe there, there was some training effect right here and there wasn't there um, you know we really weren't doing a session this is only four minutes um, but this is what you would want to present to your client some kind of a screen that gives you your time domain here and, and then your amplitude here, if you're trying to increase or decrease, uh, or uh, if you're looking at relative power or magnitude, coherence, you would, you would have that set up on your y-axis and look at your, your session along the time axis. Thank you for viewing this webinar, and if you have any questions at all, please feel free to contact me at cperson at saybrook.edu.